The first thing you will need to do is to download the app. So let's open the App Store and find the Press Reader app. Here we go. So search for Press Reader. And this is the app that we need. Now clearly I've already got it installed so then I will ask it to open the Press Reader app. And as we come into the app, you'll see in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you can see my profile. So in other words, I'm already logged in. Now that's something that you will need to do. So as soon as we get into the app, you're going to need to click at the sign in uh, indicator at the bottom of the screen where my mini uh, picture of me is in the corner of the screen. And now just popped up on the screen is hotspot information. So you can see that I've got five days complimentary access left. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm not going to be able to access Press Reader ever after five days? The answer to that is no, because I accessed uh, Press Reader on campus two days ago, and because I was on school Wi-Fi, it then gives me seven days radiant access from anywhere. So I don't need to be on campus for those seven days. But there's another way of authenticating and that is by using the library card mechanism. And that's why we have set up some logins for you parents. We're giving you these generic logins because as yet, you don't ha yet have the .asis domain emails. As soon as you have that, we will be able to set you up with your own accounts. So now let's move forward with logging you guys in with the uh, generic accounts that were shared with you by email. Let's just make sure there's no confusion over login. So I'll log out, then log back in, just so that you can see the mechanism. So I'm going to click on my icon in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen here. And there is, there's my, all my login details. Let me just sign out at the bottom here. There we go. I'm signing out. There we go. So let me go, go back to sign in. And you will see something like this on the screen when you come to sign in. So what we'll do is because we've already set up these accounts, uh, we don't need to use the library and groups, which is what Neural will have used to set up the accounts that you will use in the first place. But because we already have an account, just click on the email icon in the center of the screen. And for me, I just need to tell it to use my work email address. And of course, because this is my iPad, it already remembers my login password. So then I click on sign in. And here we go. I'm into the service. Back over to browse. Back over to browse. It's taking time. Would you like it to save my password? So let's say save. It's taken it a little while, perhaps that's my connectivity. And there we go, we're back to the main browse page. So now we've got ourselves into the app, we're logged in. Let's have a quick look at how to navigate this. You'll probably be able to guess your way through it, but I need you to know how the app builds filters. Otherwise, you'll find that you're not seeing everything. So let's say that we are interested in looking for some magazines. So I'm going to click on magazines. 
That takes me into here. And then I'm going to say, well, I want to see about magazines in a specific category. And I'll just choose the top one here. So you can see that there are 49 magazines about animals and pets. Click on that. And here they are. Here's all 49 here. But now let's see which ones are from the different countries. Now, for those of you who are interested in different languages, you can see all sorts of different options here. But you can see that there are 15 animals and pets magazines from the States, and there are eight from the UK. So let's have a look what the eight from the UK are. So I click on the UK, and there you go. There are the eight magazines from the UK. It's a really good selection. Let's say that we're interested in having a look at BBC Wildlife. Well, when we start to ask to read it, I'm going to click on BBC, there we go. If we, you can auto-download, but to be honest, I don't do that because I find that it clutters the memory of my iPad too much. But when you click on read, which I'll do now, Takes a little bit of time on my home Wi-Fi to take this offline. This is now downloading to the iPad. Right now, what I use, I'm on I'm on an iPad now. I know a lot of people don't have tablets, but most of our Key Stage Three students do. They have an iPad, and the advice I give them is for general navigation. I would use the iPad like this in uh, landscape mode. And you can see how, f how fabulous the images look on the screen. And, what I, and, and if you just touch the screen, you get, you get a pop-up of all of the pages from the magazine, which allows you to quickly navigate to things. Okay, so let's say we're interested in what's here on page 21. Now, what I usually say to the students is that on a tablet-type device, when I'm navigating, I usually use it in landscape mode. But if I want to read, I usually switch to uh, uh, portrait mode because I find it's just easier on the screen and feels more natural. And the thing I'd just like to show you here is if we zoom up and you wait just a second, how, how sharp the text is on the screen. If I want to go back, I just touch the center, touch the, touch the screen, go back to the previous page, go back to the previous page. Now, what, is there anything else that I should show you before I get you practicing this? Well, let me just show you. So the things which I have downloaded recently, I just click on downloaded. And something that I actually look at pretty much every week myself, is the Weekly Guardian. So the last one I downloaded was Friday the 30th of April. So if I click on that here, that's not what I wanted to do. Here we go. Let me try again. Let me click over here where it says Weekly Guardian. And those, you can see that I've got them all, the green ticks underneath them means they're already downloaded to my device. But you can see the one from Friday the 7th of May is not yet downloaded. But if I tap on that, it then down. I've downloaded the Weekly Guardian offline. So let me click back to the start. And if you want to start searching again, the important piece of information, and I can't emphasize this enough, is that to be sure that you've got no filters applied, click back on the main browse button and get back to here before you start your next search. Otherwise, you there's a danger that you will have filters in place.
Okay, let's just look at one more thing before we uh, set you guys off to have a play with this and then ask us, ask, ask us some questions as you're doing it. But let me just show you about uh, keeping tabs of what content you've got and how much space is taken up on your device. Because the, these uh, magazines and newspapers will not auto-delete unless you set that to happen. So you can manually delete or auto-delete. So I'm going to click on download it to see what I've got. And then up in the top right hand corner of the screen you can see the three, three dots which is where we normally find menus. So click on that. And you can see at the moment it says remove issues. At the moment it's never. So you can elect to keep how many back issues of the type of the magazines that you're using. So for me, I'm going to say for now, keep the last seven issues on the iPad. Okay, that's already done. The other option is, is let me come to the end of my list. So I've got, still got the Guardian Weekly from, uh, oh no, it's, it's, it's now just updated and done what I've asked it to do. But let me just show you what we can also do. So if I hold and press on this uh, my, uh, newspaper from the 19th of March, you can see that the one of the things that pops up in the top right-hand corner is a bin. There is also a lock. So if, if there's a particular newspaper which has got things in that you really want to keep and you do not want it to auto-delete, you can use the lock button but I'm going to actually delete this newspaper that I've got selected, so I'm going to press the red bin button now. There you go, and that's deleted. So I'm going to click back on Browse to take me to the start, and I think that puts you guys in a position to have an experiment with Press Reader. It is absolutely fantastic. I can't imagine that every single one of you wouldn't want to be using this. So I'm going to sign out from this from this recording now and we'll go back to the main meeting.